Well, what are the major misconceptions of that whole saga, uh, the, the death of George Floyd and the BLM riots that followed? You know, so much of this was manipulated and kept from the public, and we and we start that in in the film it, itself with the body camera footage. This is this is footage that uh, was withheld from the public for nearly two and a half months. That's never happened before with any sort of critical incident when it comes to Minneapolis police. We were allowed to see this viral Facebook video, and that's all. But in in the body camera footage, you clearly um, hear and see George Floyd talking about how he can't breathe long before Derek Chauvin arrives on scene. You have a, a black officer who arrests uh, George Floyd that day. And remember, this was all supposed to be about, about race. That's what, that's what we were told. Not only is Alex King involved, but, but Tu Tao, who's Hmong American, half of the, the police officers who respond that day are minority officers. Uh, but, you know, we weren't allowed to, mm. to hear about that. We weren't, we weren't allowed also to, you know, see for ourselves uh, how George Floyd was acting, uh, not complying with commands. You have the officers asking, what are you on? What did you take? And he again denies uh, again and again that, that any that he took anything and you also have uh, an arrest that happens in in 2019 that we're not told about uh, we're told that Minneapolis police didn't know George Floyd. They had nothing to do with him before. But in fact, he was the subject of an undercover drug investigation in 2019 that we were not allowed to see. And when you play that body camera footage next to what transpired in 2020, it's almost identical. Now, this week, there has been a development on his uh, Derek Chauvin's appeal. The Supreme Court has rejected uh, the appeal, which centred around the denial of the decision to uh, keep the proceedings in Minneapolis, which uh, Derek Chauvin's uh, legal team argued deprived him of his right to a fair trial because of the uh, pre-trial publicity and the threat of violence and rights in the event he was acquitted. Uh, Liz, was this decision expected and what's next for Chauvin. Yeah, I think uh, I think sadly it, it was in in the world we live in nowadays. Uh, the attorneys uh, they were hopeful uh, that that something would happen at the the level of the U.S. Supreme Court, but they also knew uh, that this was a, a pretty long pretty long shot um, after everything that's that's been allowed uh, to happen. But again, that this trial and we talk about this in the film quite a bit uh, wasn't really about what jurors were allowed to see, but what was kept from them. There are a couple more uh, legal maneuvers here that that they hope to make in, mm. in the coming uh, weeks and, and such. So we'll stay tuned for that. I know the other um, attorneys involved with the other three officers have some things uh, going on as well. Uh, certainly they were hopeful for, for a different uh, result in this, but also uh, not too surprised by what the U.S. Supreme Court decided today.